Uh, my name is Tony Peacock. I'm 52 years old and I'm a five-time national hollering champion. Hollering is a traditional form of communication and self-expression that farmers used to just make life functional on the farm. The reason the contest started was partly as a joke and also a way to raise money for the volunteer fire department that they were trying to get started in Spivey's Corner. Most of the people who were competing, they could remember a time when hollering was a way of life. This history of hollering in Spivey's Corner, a lot of people are familiar with it, but there's a lot of things that people don't know. So tell me first, how did you decide to pursue this documentary on hollering in Spivey's Corner? Well, a, a good friend of mine, Brian Gersten, who was my co-director and my co-producer, um, he actually found a documentary online called Welcome to Spivey's Corner uh, from 1978. We found out that it was still going on today, and that's how we got introduced to the world of hollering. <laughs> Talk about why it's important to you to restore local history and culture. So hollering itself is a living history. It's one of the oldest forms of communication. Um, and you hear about like war cries and hunting calls and all that stuff. And one of the places it was best preserved was actually in Sampson County, North Carolina, where the, where the hollering contest takes place every year um, at Spivey's Corner. Although the town population of Spivey's Corner was around 49 when the contest started, it was along the way to the beach um, before the highway system was introduced. They had five to 10,000 people every year, a lot of people. And then as the traffic started shifting more to the highway, if you were taking your family to the beach, you could then avoid Spivey's Corner. And it, was, it became much more out of the way. Um, and so. so this bypass, mm -hmm. essentially, that was built has somewhat turned this Spivey's Corner into a forgotten city. So yeah, that was incredible that it received such national attention. Absolutely. But I am dying to meet Robbie, who's waiting for us under Absolutely. the tree. So you mind if we take a walk I, and no, go that's meet him? Great. Yeah, we'll go meet Robbie. So lots of folks are familiar, including yourself, you and Brian, with hollering. But what is it? Did you learn anything new, something that was surprising when you were working on this project? I was most intrigued by the some of the folk songs they have. Oh, my mom and my dear old dad. Grandma left them and made them mighty sad. But I'm going on back to that rundown shack where I left my happy home as a lad. Well, I've certainly learned a lot of listening to you and screening the documentary myself. But what do you hope the viewers who come to your screening take away from this experience? Um, mainly, I hope people get an appreciation for the history of hollering. Um, by no means are we suggesting that hollering should become a main form of communication again, but I think it is important to remember where we came from to observe this heritage and make sure that things don't disappear. Tell me a little bit about your relationship with Robbie and the kind of person he is and what you took away from him. Right. So um, Robbie is a native of Clinton, North Carolina, and um, he was the junior champion in 1978. Hi, my name's Robbie Goodman. I just won the junior, the national hollering contest, Spivey's Corner, North Carolina, the junior contestants. He has this really interesting holler that actually sounds like a siren. <laughs> And there's the man, the legend. Hi, Robbie. Come in the house. Erica, so nice to meet nice you. To meet you. Thanks for coming out to meet us today. Bring it in here. Good to see you. Nice to see you too. Been a while. 
And what, what's it been like for you just to kind of revisit those elements of your past in talking to us? Well, uh, when I was approached to, to do this, uh, I was kind of thrown back and I'm like, why in the world would anybody want to do anything about hollering, you know? But, uh, and, and it has turned out to be wonderful. Breathe a brush of fresh air into something that was old. Well, Robbie, we learned a whole lot in the last year working with you, and now I think Erica has a few questions to ask you, but I will check back in with you later. All right. Now, why did you decide not to, because this competition has been going on since 1969 every year, hollering, but you didn't, had not competed until last year. Well, um, I don't really know, just, you know, life in general, you know, uh, moving and high school and the military and you know you'd hear about it and it even followed me through the military uh, everywhere i'd go you know they oh you're a celebrity I, you know I, I didn't care anything about that but, uh, you mentioned that although you've had lots of great memories and experiences you know thinking back on the hollering contest in your days as a competitor that some of it was a little challenging for you well, it, it was, there was, it, it, there was some bitter sweetness there, if you will, and a lot of that a 10 year old would not be able to comprehend, I'm part Native American. And that's, in hindsight, that seemed to play a role in how far I actually got. And I, Lord knows I, I'm not after anything uh, but fairness. Uh, I mean, if a, horse is thirsty, you give him water. You were telling me a story about a hollerer slash yodeler. Oh, Grandpa Jones. Uh, oh man, he's wonderful, wonderful yodeler. And you know, hollering goes right on in the music with bluegrass, for instance, or the yodeling. Bill Monroe, uh, Grandpa Jones, all of them. Not only is it with the Native Americans, but also with the European and the uh, folks in the Swiss Alps and uh, in that area. And it's everybody has their own little twist on it if you will and oh it's just beautiful well thank you i appreciate you, you sharing you it's great somebody. to meet you yeah if you ever need anything give us a holler i, I reckon we can do that <laughs> <laughs>